So hello, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Isabel. I am in France and this is a knitting channel. Uh, I have three sons and I have three cats. Maybe sometimes you see them here and there. Um, some say it's related. And uh, I'm bringing you this podcast in English because I miss talking in English. I used to live in the United States, but that was 30 years ago and I miss talking in English. So this is my opportunity to practice every week um, talking in English for this, uh, these videos. So on my channel, I have three series. Today it's going to be a woolly news series. You know, the news that in the wool and fiber and craft community that have caught my attention. So I'm not a journalist and this is only my own take, what I have seen and was of some interest to me. The other two series I have is the regular uh, knitting adventure type of videos where, you know, like every other people who do um, this kind of video, what I'm wearing and everything, what I'm working on and my project and all of that, what I finished. And a third series that I've started this January about my yarn no buy year, because I have a year long project, uh, because my stash was becoming really overwhelming and uh, stressing me out. So I had to do something. Okay. So uh, today it's a Woolly News series. So if this is of some interest to you, please subscribe to my channel, ring the bell so that you can get notifications whenever I upload a video, because sometimes I have an additional video during the week. And uh, please stay tuned. Okay, so today I have several um, items I would like to subject, I would like to talk about. The same way I do, do during the other Woolly News series, I usually talk about patterns I have seen and I have a, a free pattern highlight now uh, every time I do a Woolly News series. So I have several patterns I'd like to talk about and one of them is a free one. Um, a resource uh, page that I did not know about, it came across my attention and it's a nice one. So uh, maybe you can be interested in that too. Um, some kind of a trend, or I'm saying it's a trend, maybe it's not, maybe it's not, but you know, there are some kind of, uh, um, uh, coincidences for pattern releases. So I'm calling that a trend, even if it's not. And, uh, uh, one book and also, uh, news about, uh, yarn store, yarn company. Uh, but before I uh, start in the different subjects I have just outlined here, um, I would like to say that uh, I am extremely concerned about um, what ha what's happening in the uh, eastern part, eastern part of Europe and near the war in Ukraine, and uh, I'm very deeply feeling the. Uh, suffering of people in Ukraine and I know there are also people suffering in Russia and in other countries that are close to Ukraine and uh, uh, I would like to say that my heart and my thoughts uh, go to them. Um, you will find down below a link, two links, one to organizations if you wish or uh, if you would like to donate the Red Cross and UNICEF who, have, who are currently having uh, special events, uh, special donations towards the uh, helping people and children in, in Ukraine. But also, I talked about last time, um, there are now many, many creators who are donating part of their pattern sales, who are doing some kind of operations, creators, websites, Local yarn shops are doing that too. And so look around, search for the people you are usually, you like the designs or the stores you in your area or the websites you may be already, the online stores you may be already visiting, you know, people you like creations from and um, they most probably are doing some kind of 
um, effort towards sending money to some organizations they have picked uh, for um, uh, the war in Ukraine. So um, my two own are UNICEF and Red Cross. This is the ones I usually, you know, feel close to. Uh, but there are may maybe many other other organizations that many other people are supporting. So look around and maybe you can also contribute if you buy a pattern. Maybe you it was in your wish list. Maybe buy it and some some part of the sales will go to some organizations. So um, this was my first thing I wanted to say before we go into the first news and I'm going <laughs> to say another one. Um, you may see here today and yesterday, since yesterday or maybe maybe the day before, we are on Wednesday, March 15th, when I'm filming that, for a couple of days, let's say. Uh, there is a very, very, very strange uh, weather in France because uh, the Sirocco, which is um, a wind that comes from North Africa, is uh, uh, blowing very very is very strongly blowing south to north and the south of france i have seen pictures that were very very impressive um there is a huge sand storm it's not a storm let's say a huge sand cloud that it tra that is traveling from northern africa or sahara to europe so i'm in normandy so it's quite north from uh, North Africa, but we still have these uh, yellow colored uh, clouds and skies and no sun. And uh, uh, in some parts, southern from me, south of me, um, people are uh, <laughs> finding sand on their car, the streets, their houses and everything. So uh, it's supposed to continue a couple days and it's supposed to rain later tonight. So I'm not sure what, you know, having much sand uh, uh, with rain is going to be doing at least to, you know, the mechanics or things like that. But anyway, a uh, very, very strange weather uh, right now with yellow skies and uh, uh, no sun. So yeah, that, there, that and it's why it's a very strange um, light right now. Okay, so um, the first uh, topic I would like to talk about is a pattern. A pattern I have already talked about and a pattern I have already knitted. You may remember last summer I had subscribed to Trellis, so it's trellis.eu, uh, mystery box for her birthday. So I guess I bought it sometime in June or July, I do not recall. We received the yarn by mid-July or the end of July. I had it when I left uh, to go on vac vacation in the Pyrenees, so that was the last week of July. Um, and on her birthday, uh, she released the pattern to go with the yarn um, by May, and the pattern had not been published. So last week, uh, Maria, Maria Zik, I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm just gonna, you know, write her name because uh, she's in Greece. Maria Zikal Zilaku. I hope I'm not betraying her name too much. Uh, she released uh, the Fresh Peony Patterns uh, pattern uh, for this shawl. It's a very beautiful shawl. You can knit with uh, a strand of merino and a strand of uh, mohair of your choice. And uh, um, some parts, what I liked is some parts of the shawl was knitted with both uh, yarns held together. Some parts with just the merino strand and some part with just the mohair strand. So there is a stitch pattern, a lace stitch pattern in, in, in a pattern. But you also have some texture pattern that is going on in the shawl. It's a smaller shawl. Uh, it's a crescent shawl. I don't have it here because my sweater, of course, I have forgotten to say what I was wearing. It's uh, the um, fishbone, um, chunky fishbone sweater from Neringa Ricky with a very warm 
um, yarn from the Pyrenees that I bought uh, last summer. It's a very dry and uh, rough to the touch. It's not itching. I just have a t-shirt under and it's extremely warm. So uh, I, and, and as there is a big color, I don't wear shawls with big colors. I don't like that. But anyway, this shawl is a very warm and light one. Is one of the shawls I have, I have worn most of the time during this winter because as it's very light and there is some less pattern in it, you can, you know, uh, cramp it up around your neck and tighten up. It, it's extremely soft and extremely warm and I'm always warm. I'm always cold in my neck and I'm always trying to stay warm either with collars or shawls or uh, scarves. Anyway, so this pattern you can has been released. You can buy it on Ravelry. I haven't checked if there was um, another place you can buy the pattern. Usually Maria um, has, uh, I think she has her own site. I'm going to check really, really quickly. Uh, I, there is only a, a Ravelry uh, link. So if, if I find some place you can by other than Ravelry, because I know some people can go to Ravelry. Um, uh, I will link it down below. And if not, I'm sure you can contact Maria and she will, you know, arrange something for you. Maybe <laughs> I'm, I'm not talking for her. She hasn't said that, but, you know, maybe, maybe. Anyway, so there's that. The Fresh Peony Shawl uh, pattern has been released and it's a very nice one. one and uh, either you need with a trellis yarn or, you know, you can need from your, your stash. Okay, uh, next, the free pattern I want to highlight today is uh, uh, the warm-up sweater that uh, Espace Tricot has released. As always, Espace Tricot's patterns are free. They are extremely professionally edited. Um, I mean, they could sell it, I'm sure. Uh, but it's a choice and I really, really like this choice they make because I think I discovered the Ravelry. It was through one of their patterns and I followed links and I found Ravelry that way. It was uh, four years ago, um, when I took knitting back again, and I started with Espace Tricot's um, patterns, and uh, um, they were uh, one way for me also um, to learn all the terminology in English, because they are very well explained, they are both in French and English, so I could compare the version and learn the words. So anyway, they have done many, many good things to me. So um, the warm-up sweater is um, a very simple sweater, a bit boxy, a bit cropped. I like it very much, but it comes out in, uh, let's see, because I, uh, it comes out in 12 sizes, if I recall correctly. Yes, 12 sizes. That means even if you are not knitting with the recommended yarn that is Erin weight and it's uh, uh, five millimeter needles, US eight. Uh, even if you don't knit at that gauge, I am sure within the whole size range, you can find one size that meets your gauge and your yarn. So it's, uh, I like that very much because it allows you to use whatever yarn you already have, maybe, maybe if you want to knit from your stash. And if you don't want an errand type uh, weight uh, sweater, knit it at the gauge you want. And, you know, maybe you will have to make a bit of calculation. You will have to watch, to swatch, of course, but then you will most probably be able to follow one size in the pattern that will give you the size you like. So that I like very much. Uh, and they are doing this and I like it very much. The other thing is there are already 72 projects that are uh, referenced on Ravelry. If you look at the project page, uh, you will see that people have had a lot of fun with that, with colors, with stripes, uh, with colors on the cuffs, uh, contrasting colors on the cu cuffs, um, 
uh, in the front, some kind of stripes. Anyway, you know, very, very, very different uh, variations because, um, uh, you know, I've, you have all the instructions you can play and I, I like that very much. So, okay, if you are looking for a free pattern, it's, it's a bit sweatshirty, but I like this kind of sweater. If you knit it at a smaller gauge, it can be, you know, very appropriate for work. Um, yes, uh, so please, um, uh, please have a look and, uh, um, and, uh, you know, maybe you will, uh, find interest into, uh, knitting this pattern. Okay, next. Next, it's gonna be, it's not a tutorial, it's more a resource, uh, page, um, from, uh, uh, making stories. And I have to say, I did not know about this resource page, my fault. And uh, um, on this page that I will also link down below, you can have a lot of different tutorials and links to different techniques, cast on, bind off, stitch patterns, special techniques. Anyway, this resource, I did not know about, but you can find here in that link already a lot of information, but if, and you, maybe you want to keep that page in your bookmarks, but if you are subscribed to their mailing lists, and I'm sorry, I'm not gonna give you the link because I guess they prefer you go through the mailing list. Um, you receive, you can receive a link uh, to a text document where more resources are, uh, collected and uh, um, and linked and it's really another uh, one to keep I think even though if you are a seasoned uh, knitter uh, there, are, there are always many things to learn and always many things to learn from others and uh, yeah that's a nice one and uh, I like making stories I like um, um, they are very reliable to me so uh, I feel very safe recommending their resources, even though I haven't checked all of them. Okay, next. Next, a trend. But I don't think it's a trend. I think it's just a coincidence. But anyway, there are two main creators. Um, so that's uh, one, Stephen West, and the other, Petit Knit. Uh, very, very famous creators have released uh, sweater patterns that are very similar to me and similar to Genze sweaters um, with stitch patterns all over the body, the sleeve. And the first thing I um, thought when I saw Stephen West's uh, design uh, most probably because it was yellow. It reminded me of this sweater uh, on the Genze knitting source book. And they both remind me of Genze sweaters, uh, patterns. And so in this book, the yellow, the yellow sweater you see here, it, the pattern is only um, on the yoke and uh, maybe on the sleeves too, I do not recall. But anyway, this is not the one I was, so this is the one I was think, thinking of right away. But in that same book, you have other, other uh, patterns with one sweat, one cardigan and one kind of t-shirt or sle sleeveless uh, piece that are, um, with the traditional Genze type of knitting. And the, the, in the book, uh, there are already, you know, many, many, many different type of stitches, stitch patterns that are extremely nice. So this reminded me right away of that book, but both patterns are really, really close. So I am not sure I have talked about that book because I've had it for a long time. It's patterns for, uh, Genze jerseys and errands, uh, fisherman's sweater from the British Isles. It's from Gladys Thompson, and uh, a note from American knitter. Oh, right. Okay. So 
on this book you have and these the patterns in, on this book remind me more of the ones uh, you have on uh, uh, Stephen West's uh, so Stephen West is a uh, dustland sweater and put it needs it uh, in grid sweater they remind me more of you know these type of traditional games anything and on the book in this book you have the patterns for um, you have the patterns for each uh, sweater that is shown but not but the pattern is um, explained the traditional way so don't be surprised uh, it's a bit more difficult to follow uh, than uh, the patterns that are in the book from Daigi Gilpin and Sheila Greenwell, I forgot to say, the uh, Ganze Knitting Source book. And uh, these patterns in this more modern book are more easy to follow, um, uh, if you will. So I haven't checked, of course I haven't bought, so I haven't checked uh, the patterns, but uh, from Stephen West and Petit Knit, but they usually are uh, very well received and and uh, you know I have many many of Stephen West's pattern I think I have one or two from Petit Knit and uh, Stephen West issues uh, updates as soon as something happens and you know uh, improvement of the patterns is uh, is done so uh, he's following up a lot on his own pattern he has a lot of videos to explain and uh, yeah so the trend or uh, a coincidence against the type of sweaters. I like that. I have the, them. I have some on my list, on my dream list and my wish list. I have some yarn I can use to knit them. So uh, at some point, I think I will. Um, I already have one that I knitted mm, four four years ago when I took knitting back up after um, uh, I had uh, uh, work uh, gone out. But uh, and it helped me recover. And uh, but anyway, these two ones I'm sure are going to be also very well uh, explained, easy to follow. And the stitch pattern themselves do not look very very complicated to me. So it may be a bit more challenging and engaging than other plain, you know, that than the warm up sweater, for example, from Espace Trico. But, you know, when you have knitted already color work from Stephen West, it's not that easy. So, um, yes, there's that. And I'm sure uh, with a bit of, um, uh, if, you, if, you, if you maintain your effort and if you keep on knitting and if you need help and if you ask for help, you will get helped into knitting these beautiful, beautiful patterns. Okay, so next is one news about La bien -Aimé. I've already talked about that and I'm still following her and she's having a tour in the USA for her Yellow Worsted book and she's touring people, yarn shops and events and when you can't, when you can't travel you need a proxy and she's being my own proxy to um, a knitting adventure and a knitting travel and seeing her uh, posts on in Instagram is making me very happy it, it every time she posts something I have a look at it and uh, uh, I like to see her pictures with her friends people she's met places she's been where she's knitted and uh, yeah, I, I, I like her environment. I, I like her universe. I like her yarns, of course. Um, and uh, yes, it's a very lovely presence. And uh, uh, one of the uh, feeds that make me happy whenever uh, she uploads something. So, um, and uh, yeah, and it's a very nice, it's very nice she can, she can do that now uh, because I'm sure that will, uh, prompt and you know uh, fuel her creativity and if she is she is more creative in return I will have the opportunity to copy what she does and be more creative on myself so uh, yeah it's a very it's a very nice thing and I like to have these little glimpses of the USA whenever 
um, people post other things than their own needs. I like when people post about their needs, but I like when people post about other things or talk about other things. Maybe I should do it. I'm not doing it. I have very little time to dedicate to all of that and I would like and I prefer to meet. But um, yes, um, uh, yes, I like very much when people talk about other things than knitting. So uh, maybe if you're interested, please tell me, let me know in the comments down below because I try to go walk around every weekend. I usually go out in places I know, uh, but sometimes I go to other places and have walks. And uh, uh, yeah, I can maybe take pictures or little videos if you're interested, because I am very interested into what uh, other people post about their own life. So uh, my baby cat, I'm, I'm sure uh, Onyx is out and he's going from one room to the other. Um, I'm, I'm sure Onyx is around, so uh, maybe I will have to start to open to him. Anyway, uh, so he's just scratching the window, but if I open, he's going to sit and wait for me to leave the window open and not go out. Ramses doesn't go out. Or five minutes and he comes back completely stressed out with his tail that, that big. He doesn't, he doesn't like to be out, so... There is no point me getting up and opening to him because I will have to spend 20 minutes opening and shutting the door, opening and shutting the door. So if you do not mind him, you know, uh, making noises in the background, I'll, um, um, I, he will, he will, he will stop at some point. Okay. Um, one to finish, I think it's the last news. Um, I'm going to finish with is um, a book I have already talked about, a book from Lane magazine. And uh, uh, the author is uh, Meiju KP. Uh, the book is Contrasts and uh, uh, the uh, pre-sales are open. I will leave a link down below to the pre-sale page. Another temptation for me, another book, another temptation. I have been good. I bought five patterns last week or a week, two weeks ago from Sarah Nordland. I haven't bought the books I have on my list. To, so I have two books on my list already, on my want list, not my wish list. And that's going to be most probably a third one. So uh, what I'm going to do, I don't know. I don't know at all. Uh, Meiju KP is a designer from Finland. All the um, uh, previews from the book are, the patterns are very, very nice. And, you know, lace and cables and, you know, things I like, plain colors. I like Lane Magazine aesthetics. And uh, I like the way they invite people to create patterns and books for them that they publish. Um, the one from La Bien Aimée, 52 weeks of shawls or socks um i like i like their books what can i say and uh, um i like the cover of the books the texture the smell of the pages <laughs> the smell of the ink so uh yeah i like everything about that and uh, um they are very very nice books um so yeah what am, am I going to do? Am I going to buy it? I don't know. Am I going to pre-order it? I do not know. Um, have a look if you wish. And uh, so with Lend Magazine, the only one comment, if I'm allowed to say, uh, would be that I would very much appreciate they uh, give PDF files to download because um, I, I understand why they do not. And it's their choice and fine. And if I'm not comfortable with that, I should not buy their things. That's just that. I'm still buying because I love, I love their patterns and I love everything about them. But I would like very much that they give files that um, with the patterns, maybe with a download code or something, because um, that would help a lot the aging part of the knitters whose eyesight are not, is not getting better every year. 
and uh, um, that would also most probably help the uh, people with eyesight deficiency to have access to their own patterns. So, um, yes, other than that, a very appealing, a very tempting book um, that I'm going to place on my wish list. And uh, uh, yeah, I'm not sure what I'm going to be doing about that. Okay, so that's it for today, 30 minutes, it's not too bad. And uh, uh, so I will now move to some uh, life updates. So um, if you're not interested in that, uh, I will see you next time. And I will thank you very much for your time, for maybe subscribing and uh, for watching this video and maybe leaving comments down below if you have suggestions or remarks or inputs or things to share with um, the community who's uh, watching these videos. Thank you very much. Okay, so on the life of updates, my father is, it's a steady state, not better, not worse, but I'm always preparing for the worst because the wound that on his foot is not getting any better, not worse, not worse, but not healing. It's been two weeks now. Um, I know, I know he has so many conditions, uh, health conditions, diabetes and heart condition and lung and kidney and everything. But anyway, um, one thing that's worrying me right now is in France, we are now allowed to remove uh, our masks. I do not. I wear my mask everywhere I go. I wear my mask when I teach. Yesterday, the students were all, had all removed their own mask as they are allowed. It's a personal choice. I kept mine. And uh, the... Um, uh, coronavirus um, epidemic or uh, cases are going back up in France. And it's two weeks after, um, I guess it, maybe you call that winter break or something, two weeks after vacation for uh, younger students. And uh, most probably they traveled, they saw their family, people were without uh, mask and maybe less um, were less careful about uh, uh, all the habits we had, you know, you know, we had for two years, and uh, um, the cases are going back up. Of course, the pressure on the health system and the hospital is not going up because the authorities say this virus is um, gives. Uh, is more powerful into contaminating people, but uh, the disease is less intense and uh, hospitalization is less intense than uh, with the original virus. But still, cases are going up and at the same time, we are allowed to remove the masks other than in public transportation and in the hospital, of course, and where, uh, you know, uh, some other health institutions. Um, but when they tell us you can remove the mask and on the other side, the cases are going up, even if this virus uh, strain gives mild symptoms, we have no idea why, what the long-term impact of uh, coronavirus uh, contamination are, is. Um, we, we know that there are long-term impacts. Some people have had um, very severe consequences of the contamination. So I'm a bit uneasy about that and I'm even less easy about that than when everyone was wearing their mask. So um, I told my parents, don't, don't leave your 
mask out when you go shopping or go see people or everything keep your mask on i'm not sure they're going to do it um the vaccination for the fourth shot so that's the second boost uh, are open for people over tw uh, 80 years old in france so i said go get your own vaccinations i'm not sure they are going to do it right now i hope i hope they will uh, but anyway, as far as my father, it's a steady, steady state, uh, but it's not getting better. And I'm afraid I will have a quite difficult year. Right. So um, anyway, uh, other than the strange weather and the strange light, everything is yellow. I'm not sure the camera shows as yellow as the sky is. Uh, in reality, but uh, other than that, I have you know knitted quite a bit because it's one of my comfort uh, actions. Okay, so Frances is maybe gonna come. I'm gonna let him come. So I've been knitting quite a bit, and uh, I hope that your knitting allows you to actively place happiness into your life because it's not going to come out by, all by itself, by itself. And you need to actively invite happiness into your life. So um, whether it's your knitting or other things, one stitch at a time, and uh, that keeps us, it's a very nice symbol to me to keep moving up, moving forward, one stitch at a time. And after one stitch and one stitch, you have a humongous shawl that is finished. I have finished my half and half uh, triangle wrap. So I will talk about that next week. In the meantime, I hope your knitting brings you happiness. I thank you for watching. And I will see you next time. And maybe Hamses is coming here. You see him? Yes, Hamses is here. He says hello. Okay, see you next time.